Hello, I'm Ming from 1009. Hello, my name is Carl from 1009. Today, we are going to present about the uh, two reactions in photosynthesis. Which are light-independent reaction and light-dependent reaction. Let's talk shortly about photosynthesis. Photo is mean light and synthesis is mean making. So the word photosynthesis is mean the process in which plants make their own food by the using of sunlight. As we might know that photosynthesis equation is 6H2O plus 6CO2 which are carbon dioxide plus water and by the use of sunlight it gives out C6H2O6 plus 6O2 which are glucose and oxygen. So we will be looking deeper to the processes of photosynthesis which are the two processes that working together. The first process is light-dependent reaction and the second process is light-independent reaction. Okay, so let's start with the light-dependent reaction first. This reaction occurs only at daytime because it needs sunlight to process. It happens at the thylakoid membrane. Inside the thylakoid membrane, there are two photosystems called photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. You can call it for short, PS1 and PS2. The reaction starts at PS2 first and then PS1. The photosystems have a green pigment called chlorophyll, which capture the light that comes in. Because it has chlorophyll, that's why the dependent reaction occur here. The inputs of this reaction are light, water, and ADP plus and ADP. And the outputs are oxygen and ADPH and ATP. How does the light dependent reaction work? So we have to look at our first step. It begins inside the PS2 or photosystem 2. There is a chlorophyll molecule called P680. P stands for pigment and 680 stands for 680 nanometer. This 680 because these molecules absorb the base when the light is 680 nanometer. It grabs the electron from water by breaking the H2O molecules. After the water molecule is broken down apart, we will get one half of O2 and two hydrogen ion. So we will get oxygen atom as our byproduct in this process. The oxygen byproduct will become oxygen molecules when this step is repeated. And how about our hydrogen ion? So the hydrogen ion will stay inside the thylakoid and increase its concentration. Next, when the light reach P680, the electron that P680 get will be powered and now our electron will be in excited state. After that, the electron will be transferred to photosystem 1 or PS1. When the electron is traveling to PS1, it travels through the electron transport chain. It uses energy all the time because it travels all the time. So the energy is released. The energy that is released is used to pump the hydrogen ions from another side to the thylakoid. The electron travels from high energy state to low energy state and reaches P700. The job of P700 is the same with P680, but for P700, it can absorb light for 700 nanometers. P700 absorbs light and then gives the electron energy. Electrons then become excited again. After the electron is being excited, it goes to an ADP plus and provides energy for it to let the NADP plus convert to an ADPH. As I said before that the hydrogen ions was pumped into the thylakoid. If it can come in, it can go out to right. So when it wants to go out, it will go through the ATP synthase. While it is traveling out, it will trigger the ATP synthase and let the ATP synthase 
attaches to the phosphate group onto ADP, and this forms ATP. Let's talk about light independent reaction. For the light independent reaction, it is also called as Kevin cycle or dark reaction. It's named dark reaction because it can occur both daytime or nighttime because it doesn't require sunlight to run this cycle. The reaction happens in the stoma or the liquid part of the chloroplast. And in this cycle, it requires three carbon dioxide molecules, 9 ATP and 6 NADPH. The product of this cycle is DTP and this all process is occur in cycle. The input of light independent reaction are 9 ATP, 6 NADPH, 3 carbon dioxide molecules. And the output of light independent reaction are 6 ADP plus 6 phosphate, 6 NADP plus and GTP. How does the light independent reaction work? So first, three molecules of carbon dioxide enter the Kelvin cycle and attach to three RUBP. At first, each RUBP chain has five carbon molecules. So after carbon dioxide attached to each chain, it will then have six carbon molecules. When six carbon molecules stay together, it is unstable so it split into three. We first have three RUBP, so after we split, we will have six chains, and now we call it 6-3-PGA. Six means six chain, and three means each chain has three carbon molecules. After they split into six 3-PGA, these six 3-PGA will rearrange itself into six GTP by using six ATP and six NADPH. Each 3PGA will use 1 ATP and 1 NADPH. So 6 of the 3PGA will use totally 6 ATP and 6 NADPH per cycle. Next, one of the 6 GTP will leave the cycle, which makes the remaining 5 GTP to relance itself into 3 IUVP by using 3 ATP. So, this cycle will start all over again. To produce one glucose molecule, it requires two complete cycles of light independent reaction. That is all of our presentation. Thank you for your attention.